Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at a very important technique for digital art, which is smudging and blending things together. I'll be using Critter version 4.3.0 and I'll explain where the smudging brushes are, but I'll also be talking about the different ways of smudging and blending. Now, if you're completely new to digital drawing, then check out my digital drawing for noobs link in the description. If you like what I do and the way I teach, then check out my Learning to Draw Creating Game Art course, available now and you can get a discount with the link in the description. So to start off with, I'll use this brush here, the Basic 5 size. And when I draw, it's a very hard brush, but the size changes the more pressure I add. I'll undo that and I'll use that brush to create two colours, one on top of the other. So a red up here and then a blue below it. And we want to blend these together. So first of all, where are the smudging brushes? So if I scroll down in my brushes, you come to some brushes here which have a sort of white look to them. And this one even looks like a smudging stick. And that one looks like a cotton bud. Let's choose the smudge stick. Come up here and then I can push from the blue into the red and you can see it smudging in together. And then I can push from the red into the blue and it smudges back again. And that's the way to use the smudging brushes. Start over the color you want to smudge from into the other color, so like this, or if I want red to go the other way, into the blue, like this. You can also change your opacity with any brush so it becomes sort of less strong when we do this and you get a really sort of gradual blend if you do that. And that's a very effective way of blending your colors or tones, which is the light and dark, together. Okay, so what are the other ways? I'll go back up to my basic brush there and do the same thing next to it. Well, another way of blending is by color picking. Now it doesn't work very well for hard brushes, but I'll show you what it looks like with this brush. So to color pick, we hold down control and left click. And you can see on my color wheel, it changes from color to color. And in order for this to work, you need to lower the opacity. Something like 20% is fine. And how low you go with the opacity is how well you want it to be blended and how much work you want to do. But with the blue selected now, by holding down control and left clicking, I can then slowly draw into the red like this, then color pick the blended color between the two. So if you look at my color picker and I control click on this one, it's slightly more towards the red. So the blue here, and then we're slightly more to the red there. And then I can slowly blend that in and then color pick that one. And again, watch my color wheel as it goes towards the red again and blend that in. Now, if I zoom in a touch, you can see that's pretty hopeless. And that's because I've got a really hard brush here. If I choose something like a nice soft brush, such as the airbrush just above it, and I'll resize that down so it's not so big, Change the opacity again, and I'm using about 25%. Choose the red up here, and then start blending these across. And then choose this middle color here, and start blending that across. And then come from the blue if I need to, blend that backwards. So all the time, holding down control, left click, and blending them into each other. And slowly, you can build up a gradual blend, just by choosing colors in between, and blending them lightly together. So it's all about using the color picker with control left click with a low opacity and then the new color you create, you then color pick that and then slowly blend between the two. Okay, so what about an example of this and when should we use it and when shouldn't we? Now the difference between the two, the smudge stick which we used over here has a bit less control and you've got more options when you use the color picking technique here. I'll just take you to my sword design and you should be able to see from here that this isn't all smudged together and smooth. If we look at the handle, for instance, it's got a dappled sort of dotty type effect on it. When I zoom out, they look a bit more blended together. And that sort of dappled, less smooth blending can often add lots more character to an object than if it's all really cleanly smoothed out. So if I duplicate this layer here, and let's come down to my smudge brush. Let's choose the cotton bud this time, very slightly different. And I'll zoom in. And I'll just slowly smudge out a few of these areas, make it a bit smaller and I'll reduce the opacity as well, which you can do, which reduces the strength. So I'll smudge these areas together. I'm being quite gentle with it because it can really kill an image if you're not careful. Okay, so we've got a very sort of smudged together image now, and the transitions between the colors and the tones is really nice. But if we look at the original here and the new one, I would say the original has a lot more character because of the variation, it's got a more organic textured feel to it. And when we see the blended version, we lose that sense of texture and those real character elements. So that's using the smudging method. If I come in now though, after smudging and choose a brush like the basic six details brush here, and let's come in a bit and start color picking. 
So color pick from here and add a few more detail elements. So holding down control and left clicking, sharpening up lines and adding a bit more variation, picking from different colors, giving it that more sort of dappled effect. I can reduce my opacity and blend a little bit more between these things. And you can see I've got a lot more control now, so I can reduce the, the opacity further and blend again just by holding down control and left clicking. And you can see that this side here has a lot more character than this side over here. And if you grab a dark color, let's say, and put a dent in here, I can then select the colors around it to blend it in a bit, maybe give it a highlight from over here and just give it a sudden little dent like that. And that's the power of using the color picker where we suddenly got more character like this than just using the smudge tool alone. And lots of beginners seem to make that mistake of just going to the smudge tool, smudging it all out, smoothing everything so it's got a much cleaner look, but you can wipe out all your character elements doing that. That's why it's important to use that blending color technique so you can go in and color pick from areas surrounding the point you're working on to offer variation, to offer characteristics and create more life in your objects. Okay, so hopefully that will help you when you're blending and smudging colors together. By all means, use the smudging tool. It's a really great tool. They're very useful for quickly blending things together, but try not to rely on it and use the color picking method for much more control and texture within your drawings. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support and I'll see you next time.